Hello everyone, and welcome to Lesson 10 of Objective-C on the Mac. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how to use the NS Dictionary class in Objective-C. So an NS Dictionary works like a normal dictionary does in the real world. In the real world, if we use a dictionary, we look up a word, and we get the definition or value that pertains to that word. So, um, in NS dictionary terms, we look up our key, which is our word, and then we get a value, which is basically our definition. So again, a normal dictionary is word to a definition, and an NS dictionary is just a key to a value. So those are just basically the terms that um, each of those use. So to use an NS dictionary, all we have to do is create an NS dictionary object. So as every other object that we create, all we have to do is that. And that's just saying that's our class name, NS Dictionary. And now uh, we create an object out of this. So we are going to call this one dict. And now we have two options, of course, with all different objects that we do. We can usually, we can either use the alloc init version, which basically says we can keep this object around as long as we want, or we can use the temporary way or um, using convenience methods that will keep the dictionary along for quite a while anyway, but it will eventually get rid of itself. So that those are the two different options, but I'll show you the alloc in a way first. And again, we'll talk about um, the difference between these two later on, but uh, I want to keep it simple for now. So uh, the alloc in a way basically works like this. We have NS dictionary and alloc, of course, that's always what we do. Um, I don't think there's ever any difference between that. So you can always use the class name and then the alloc. And now we do init with and right here, objects and keys. And basically this method will allow us to add entries to our dictionary. So what we'll do is we'll enter a value and then it then it's key. And then we can keep adding more entries as we go. So if we want to add another value and a key and another value and a key, we can do that as well. We can keep going, I don't know how long, but we you get the idea. We can keep adding more entries to our dictionary. So an entry is just a key and a value, if you didn't know. So all we have to do here, uh, we're going to work with string objects. And this is actually an important concept is that NS dictionary doesn't just work with string objects. So uh, that's how I guess it is different than a uh, normal dictionary. But an NS dictionary can work with any object. So usually for the key, you'll use a string. And for its value, you can use any object. So I could be, you know, for going back to our rectangle class that we've worked with, I could I could add an object of a rectangle in here. I can add any object that I want. That's not important. The, the important part is that uh, the key pertains to the object. Okay. So, um, but we're, we're going to use strings in this case because uh, it's easier to relate to. So um, we're going to create a normal kind of dictionary here, and our first entry is going to be of a dog. And I don't really know how to define what a dog is, so I'm just going to call it a house pet. And from there, basically our, um, basically the, the house pet is the value, and dog is going to be our, um, it's going to be our key. So um, from there, and I don't know why I keep screwing up, so so far we've entered one entry and we have one key and one value. Our key is dog being the, the word that we're going to look up and our value is house pet which is like the definition. So now we are going to enter another um, uh, entry into this dictionary. So again we start with the value and we're going to say flies around and then we're going to say for the key that it's a bird. And I guess that makes logical sense. So um, that's pretty much all you have to do for an NS dictionary. So we we again we've entered um, we've called the method init with objects and keys, which basically asks for uh, an, a value and a key or an object and a key, and you can enter as many entries as you want. So uh, you have to finish off the NS dictionary like you do with NS array with a nil object basically saying that this dictionary is now complete. We've finished off the dictionary. 
Okay, so ending the dictionary with nil is a necessary step. So now we've created our dictionary with two different entries, one of dog, one of bird, both with their different uh, separate values. And now we can run an NS log and we can return the objects that pertain to the keys. So let's uh, print something out here and we're going to print out objects since strings are objects, right? So we want to call uh, a method or send a message for the dictionary object. And our method for this is going to be objects for key. And the key, of course, is just the value, or sorry, not the value, it's the key that we're looking up, or the word, so we enter dog, like so. So again, this method is just calling, it's, uh, it's looking for the object, the object is our dictionary, and then we just are calling the object for key method. So on the dictionary object, we're sending the message for object for key dog. So it will return the value that dog corresponds to. So since dog corresponds to house pet, we will get the value back of house pet and that it will be what prints out. So let's go ahead and finish this off and we'll build and run this. No problems. Good. And now let's go to our console and as you can see we get the value of house pet. And not, no surprises here I guess. So now let's try uh, with our bird object or our bird key rather build and run and let's check out our console and as you can see flies around is the value that gets returned for the bird so nothing too complicated here it does work like a simple dictionary so there's nothing uh, that's too um, radical to us or anything so what if we enter this value of Bob that doesn't uh, pertain to our dictionary or isn't in our dictionary well let's go ahead and build and run this see what happens and if we go to our console as you can see, we just get null, because basically Bob is not part of the dictionary, so it will return null, since it's non-existent. So um, that's simple enough, and now uh, I'm just going to show you the way that you can do this making the temporary object. So we just learned the way of alloc init, those are our, um, that's the creating the memory and then the initializing of the object, but we can also create a temporary object of this or using convenience methods, which again just means that the object will stay around as long as it thinks it needs to stay around for. So uh, the uh, method for this is just dis dictionary with objects and keys, and oops, didn't mean to finish that off. So that's the me uh, me method that we're going to run, dictionary with objects and keys, and you can see that the methods that you run are very, very similar always for the init version and just the convenience method version because the only difference that we had was init. That's the only word that actually changes. So the methods, which are very nice in Objective-C, tend to stay the same around um, for most methods. So we have init with objects and keys, and now we have dictionary with objects and keys. And this is the temporary object version of our dictionary. So uh, again, the alloc in it and the temporary is not really important. All I just wanted to show you is that there are two different ways to do this. Um, don't get too concerned about um, what version you're supposed to use yet because what we're doing uh, doesn't really matter which way we do it because it's our programs are so short that it doesn't really matter. But later on we'll get into how that's important. I just wanted to show you that there are two different ways of creating NS dictionary objects. And that there are two ways to create every object in Objective-C using alloc in it or um, our convenience methods like we do here. So again, uh, this works the exact same way as um, our previous setup did. So that was the NS Dictionary tutorial. And of course, there are many more uh, methods and things that pertain to NS Dictionary but I'd just like to give a brief overview of how it works so you understand the basic concepts. And if you want to look more into NS Dictionary, you can always check out the developer documentation. And if you don't know how to do that, I actually made um, a, a great tutorial on looking up doc, a developer documentation, which is the Xcode Tips uh, tutorial section that I've been doing for a while. I have like five tutorials in it now. And uh, I think the most recent one was on 
um, how do you look up developer documentation or use developer documentation. So if you haven't checked out the to that tutorial, I highly suggest that because you'll be able to look up all those different methods that pertain to different objects or different classes, sorry. So you can look up some different me different methods that are in NS Dictionary and you can play around with them and um, yeah, so that's the whole point of programming is playing around with different stuff. So anyway, um, this was the tutorial on how to use NS Dictionary. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or just send me a message. Uh, or thumbs up the video and please subscribe to the channel. I'm always making more tutorials and I hope to see you on the next one. Alright, see you then.